This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hey guys, Big Paul here. Today we are going to talk about what it takes to get massive. I'm talking about being the biggest dude in the gym massive, being the biggest dude that all your friends have ever seen. I'm talking about being a super heavyweight bodybuilder on stage, being 240, 250 pounds ripped. Uh, not, not some just, you know, little, little gym bro that's 180 and looks like he lifts some weights. I'm talking about being massive. We're going to dig into diet, PEDs, training, all of it. I'm going to talk about what it takes to get huge. All right, so first things first, getting huge takes time. Uh, we're going to talk about the time frame it takes to get big. And this is something that a lot of people don't consider. I, I have people that reach out to me for coaching. I talk to guys on social media that are very impatient and think that they're going to add 70 pounds of muscle in one year just by doing a couple cycles. It doesn't work that way. I know I had this really big rebound the last year or whatever where I added a bunch of stage weight and and uh you know it's a little bit it's a little bit deceiving because I've been lifting weights since I was a teenager <clears throat> off and on I've taken breaks I took some time off I came back I did things so I it this is the culmination of 30 years of lifting for me so it doesn't happen overnight and you look at some of the people that have done and made the most progress uh, in the gym or in uh, physique wise guys like Nick Walker, big Rami. I, I, th I think big Rami p put on something like 70, 80 pounds of stage weight, in, you know, in like five, six years. So, but it, when you break down the math on it, he was gaining 10 to 15 pounds of stage weight a year over that time frame, And he's the largest human being, one of the largest human beings on the planet right now. So, Realistically, you have to allow yourself enough time to get big. One year of doing gear is not going to make you huge. Two weeks of doing gear is not going to make you get huge. I see guys all the time, bro, I've been on my cycle for a month. I'm not seeing any progress yet. Well, no shit. You've only been doing it for a month. Think about climbing Mount Everest. If you're climbing to the top of Mount Everest, every step that you take closer to the peak doesn't seem like you're any closer. But you are, you're moving closer and over time you'll get to the top, but it just takes patience, persistence, and you have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. You have to, you know, there's going to be some setbacks, there's going to be challenges, there's going to be sometimes you make more progress than others and other times where you kind of go backwards. Uh, but if you keep moving forward, you will eventually get there. But the progress is almost imperceivable day to day, step by step. And that's the way it is in bodybuilding. One week to the next, you really cannot see progress. The only exception to that would be when you're getting down towards the end of contest prep. You can definitely see progress then because you're getting super lean. And when you're coming off of rebound on contest prep, you know, that five or six weeks post show, that magical period of time when you put on a bunch of size and fill back out, those are about the only times that you can see progress from day to day. Otherwise, it's just a grind. Um, with As far as diet goes, when we're getting into diet for for getting big, and I, I got a lot of people butthurt on Instagram when I talked about eating like a bodybuilder. like, And I'm not talking about eating to be healthy. I'm talking about eating to be a fucking super heavyweight bodybuilder. I just want to clarify that for people. And eating for a, to be a super heavyweight bodybuilder is not healthy, really. I mean, it, it just isn't. You can make it healthier, but jamming down that much food, you're going to increase mTOR. You're putting a lot of stress on your your uh, digestive tract. I mean, there's just your blood pressure is probably going to go up some. There's just a bunch of trade-offs that, that, that go along with it. And you probably are sacrificing some life, some years off your life when you do it. You know, you, know, you can do it safer, but there is no 100% safe way to do it. 
keeping your saturated fats low, eating clean, uh, whole foods helps, uh, you know, sticking to easy to digest stuff, staying away from foods that cause gut irritation and inflammation. But really, at the end of the day, if you want to get massive, it boils down to just eating meat and rice six times a day for years on end. That's it. It's really boring. That's the part that people don't get. They get focused in on what gear to take. They get focused in on what supplements to take and what training program to take. But at the end of the day, the diet is the most important part. And if you want to get big, you got to eat a shit ton of food and you got to eat a shit ton of clean food. Anybody can pound cheeseburgers all day long and eat ice cream and eat donuts. That's not a problem. But I'm telling you, try to eat 6,000 calories of chicken and rice every fucking day. And you let me know how easy that is. It is one of the hardest things that you could do in your life. And I think it's why a lot of people just don't get that big. At the end of the day, it's the food. The food is the differentiator between the guys that get really massive and the dudes that just look like gym bros. So if you want to be that freak in your gym, the biggest guy in the gym, you have to embrace eating until you feel sick. It's just, it's just how it is. I, I don't know of any other way to put it. People don't want to hear it. They think that it's more gear. And certainly gear works, but it only takes you so far. If you think of it this way, <laughs> it's like having taking more gear. I hear, my coach Justin says this all the time, and I, this is a really great analogy. Taking more gear is like sending more construction workers to a construction site. Uh, and the food is like the bricks and the lumber. If you're not, you can put all the construction workers you want at the construction site. You can overstaff it. But if you're not delivering enough bricks and wood, you're not going to build a build a high-rise building. It, it just doesn't work that way. So if you want to build something massive, you have to deliver more material to the construction site. Uh, you know, take adding more construction workers is not going to get it done. Um, anyway, uh, so moving on to the PEDs. Uh, you know, so this is this is a this is the touchy one. Um, Everybody thinks they're one cycle away from being Mr. Olympia. At least the newbies do. Anybody who's been doing it for a while knows that that's not the case. But I get a lot of newbies come to me and they're like, I'm, bro, I'm ready to cycle. I think I'm going to blow up and I'm going to be ready to get my pro card. And it just makes me want to punch myself in the head when I, when I hear that. You're not one cycle away from getting your pro card. 99.9999% of people aren't. There are some genetic mutants out there that maybe that's true. It, it, but, you know, maybe you've been training 10 years natural. You had everything buttoned up, your your diet, your, your your training. You've been perfect and you just need that little extra push. All right, maybe. But most people aren't like that. Okay, so it takes five to 10 years of being on PEDs to build a pro level physique if you want to be an open class bodybuilder. Um, if you want to have that sort of physique, and I'm talking about five years, five to 10 years of continuous use. I'm not saying that's what you should do, but this is what guys that are on that level do. They're blasting and cruising. They're taking shit year round. Some guys come off, but when they say they come off, they're really fucking coming off for two months. Nothing's really clear in their system during that time. They're never really off. You know, they... <laughs> They can justify it and say that they're off because they came off for two months. Oh, I don't, I don't do gear year round. I, I clean out for two months. You aren't cleaned out after two months. If you're off for six months or a year, then you're cleaned out. So everybody that gets that big is running gear year round. They just are. Uh, it's just how it goes. And the typical stuff that you you see pros. I, one of the things that I've have been gifted with is. Over the years, I've gotten to know a lot of pro bodybuilders. I've gotten to know a lot of people that train pro bodybuilders. Um, and I have some insight on what these guys use. It's a lot, but it's not as much as a lot of the guys on Reddit think. It's not the 10 grams and 20 units of GH. Nobody could afford to do that. I'm sure there has been some dumbass that's done it. There always is. There's always outlier. There, there are always outliers on things. But your your 
your average pro bodybuilder, open class bodybuilder, is probably running somewhere between two and a half and three grams of gear. Maybe up to three and a half. Probably running somewhere between eight and 12 units of, of GH. That's just what they do. You know, that, that's, that would be my guess that that's the large majority of them. I, I haven't done a census, so I can't say for sure, but a lot of the guys that I've talked to, that seems to be pretty typical. And they don't run all the crazy exotic stuff that your average gym bro does. All these SARMs, all these weird off-the-wall compounds, you know, they do simple shit. It's testosterone, nandrolone, primabolin, testosterone, equipoise, primabolin, trend. I mean, it, it's just, you know, that's it. That's pretty much it. You know, maybe some orals here and there. But most pros that I talk to don't run orals in the off season. If they do, it's they might do a short run of Anadrol or something like that. But for the most part, it everybody's doing the same shit. Okay, so that's not what's, you know, I got to be careful what I say here because people get really fucking pissed off about it. The gear is not what's separating you from being a pro. It's the hard work. And the diet is the hard work. That's the hard work that nobody wants to put in. It just is. As far as training goes, um, if you want to be a freak, I've seen guys that do hit training, they get huge. I've seen guys that do high volume training, they get huge. I see guys that don't train with heavyweights, they get huge. I've seen guys that train with massive weights, they get huge. So there's more than one way to skin the cat. I think the most important part is that you train hard, you train consistently, you eat a lot of food, you take gear, you're resting, you're not going out and partying with your friends like an asshole, you're not getting drunk and doing recreational drugs, you go home, you go to sleep, you rinse, repeat, rinse, wash, repeat, do it over and over again year after year and that's how you get big. Uh, you know, I, I think there are more efficient ways to train for certain physique outcomes, but at the end of the day, I've seen guys on the stage, pro stage, at the super heavyweight level, the open class level, that are training all sorts of different ways. But I do promise you that every single one of them is eating a diet that's very similar. Every single one of them are taking pretty much the same types of gear and the same amounts. There are some that push the limits more. There's some that test things more. Uh, you know, uh, guys are using insulin a lot. Most pros are using insulin. That's something else that people don't realize. I, I don't know why they don't realize that, but I'd, I'd say the large majority of pros right now are using insulin. Not all, but I'd say the majority of them are. Uh, you know, so it's test, HGH, insulin, um, you know, an anabolic that they like. That's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. So if you want to get massive, recapping all of this here, you got to train hard. You got to eat until you're uncomfortable and eat boring shit like meat and rice. Uh, day in, day out, month after month, year after year. You have to train hard, whatever your training chosen training program is. Don't miss time in the gym. Don't party. Get your sleep in. Don't miss meals uh, and, you know, take the basic PEDs and do it for five to 10 years. And that's how you get massive. That's really it at the end of the day. All right, guys, hopefully you find this helpful. I'm sure a lot of you are going to think I'm wrong, but leave your comments in the comment section below. I'd love to debate. Uh, and once again, I appreciate all of you watching my channel. I know I give everybody a hard time, but um, even the people that disagree with me, I love you too. Um, I appreciate the support for the channel. Thank you, guys. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.